Bayern, only 65% according to the SBI. Uh, Raf, how concerned are Bayern going into this clash? The boys all say Bayern Munich. Uh, do you agree? Yeah, I think Bayern should, uh, you know, should have enough. They have problems, but their problems, I think, are not quite as fundamental as Arsenal's have been. And Arsenal history, you know, bears out that they come up against a certain quality of position and just haven't got the tactical cohesion. Uh, and if you want the me mental fortitude to deal with it, and I think it's going to be a similar story. But this is, of course, a much more ordinary Bayern team, a much more vulnerable Bayern team that we have seen over the last few years. If at Arsenal you think you, there will always there will be one chance where you can change the script, this would be against Ancelotti's Bayern. I still think, though, that they'll have too much for them. Has Mesut Ozil become a luxury player for Arsenal that they can't afford in the big games? Certainly he appears to have uh, struck a chord with Martin Keown, a man who knows what it takes mm. to be successful under Arsene Wenger. Where's the issue here? Is it Ozil not turning up in the big performances? Well, Ozil, as you know his strengths and, and it's the attacking side of the ball in terms of his assists and, and his goals. And it's not as though... Mesut Ozil has all of a sudden started to shun his defensive duties. I don't think he's ever done that at Arsenal. He's, he's never been that kind of player. But they've had the bodies in and around him um, to make up for that. And he's just provided so much in, in, in the attacking third that it's been impossible to leave him out. Now all of a sudden he's not scoring, he's not assisting as he once does, uh, as he once did. You, everybody's looking for, for a bit more and starting to pick holes in his games. Now, again, this is nothing new for Mesut Ozil, but we, Arsenal have been happy to accept it, um, given what he's done in the attacking third. Now you kind of find yourself not playing that well, him not providing as, as much, and you have Martin Keown questioning whether he's the type of player that Arsenal needs or, or can continue to carry. Can they make up for it elsewhere on the pitch, or is this just a fundamental problem with Arsenal that they do not have enough hard workers in their team to really challenge for the serious honours? Well, they have hard workers. You know, you've got players like El Nenny who only wants to defend. Um, you've got Ramsey who can come in and, and do a job that side of the ball, but oftentimes he likes to get forward as well. The trouble is when you have, um, when you have players around Mesut Ozil who want to get forward or aren't fully appreciating what his positioning or his, his lack of tracking back, then you can find it yourself in, in, in huge issues. Also, when you have an opposition who knows that Mesut Ozil is not going to track back and can put a player to play the, the defensive side to defend against Mesut Ozil, but then attack when he doesn't drop back, you, again, you can find yourself in problems. So this is an, an issue for Arsene Wenger to, to work out tactically. It's not just down to the player or just down to Arsenal, but you've got to figure out how the opposition are playing against you and fill those voids. Only one of his goals and one of his assists against the top eight so far in the Premier League. He was a big part of their Champions League group stage campaign. What an opportunity and what a test with Bayern Munich coming up on Wednesday in the Champions League for Ozil to go back to his homeland. Yeah, I'm, 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 again, I'm, I'm not sure that Arsenal are, are equipped to get the better of Bayern Munich, but as you say, it's a huge opportunity. And in a tightening race at the top four, which um, I think Arsenal may, may very well find themselves on the outside looking in, this is the time for Mesut Ozil to step up and prove the likes of me and Martin Keown wrong. A massive challenge then awaiting not only Ozil, but the whole of his Arsenal team. Can he step up when it really matters? The Champions League coverage, of course. A lot of questions surrounding Alexis Sanchez. Stevie Nichol joining me for this one. Stevie Palmer's and the latest big name to chime in on the supposed saga of what's going on. Does he stay? Does he Always go? He says saga. it is a saga. He <laughs> says that Sanchez is the only player at Arsenal that could fit into Tottenham's team, that could possibly even just make Tottenham's team. We heard from Sol Campbell, he said the Gunners lack leaders. And William Gallus, he even questioned Wenger's desire to, to win trophies. So what do you make of the latest comments? Which one do you want first? Let's start with Merson, he's the latest. Uh, I think he's right. Uh, I think at the start of the season, if you were to, or if I was to pick a, uh, a combined side, there'd probably be four or five Arsenal players in it. Mm -hmm. But right now, if everybody's 100% fit, I agree wholeheartedly with Paul Merson. Sanchez is the only one that would get in the team. Uh, that kind of tells you where Arsenal are right now. 
Uh, as far as Arsene Wenger's desire to win trophies, I don't think that ever changes in a manager. I think the problem Wenger has is the players he's brought in haven't been up to winning the big trophies. I think the desire's there from Wenger. The ability on the field is what's missing. And, and William Gallus, again, is 100% right. And I don't think anybody could argue that what we've seen recently in this Arsenal side is a team that when the going gets tough, they're not, they're not there. They don't get going. They don't get going. All right. Well, I'm sure that they will do everything they can to hang on to Alexis Sanchez because he is quite the player indeed. But he, they'll have a tough time doing so because Paris sure Saint-Germain seem to be interested, Atletico Madrid, Chelsea, and of course, Juventus. Now, it may look unlikely, but do you see that happening? Um, I certainly don't see Chelsea. You can forget <laughs> that one straight away. Um, to me, the one that makes sense is Juventus. Uh, I guess the first answer is yes, I do see him moving. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you've seen recently his, his demeanour after games. He's clearly unhappy. The guy wants to win the title. He wants to certainly win trophies, if not the Premier League. Uh, so this is a guy that I think, with only 12 months left on his deal at the end of the year, I think maybe a big bid could take him away. And Juventus, to me, seems perfect. You know, they are going to win, what, the sixth title in the trot, I think it is, this season. Uh, that's not going to change for the foreseeable future. That means he's going to win titles. And, of course, the Champions League, you know, at this at this time, they're probably in the top, what, six or seven teams uh, in, the, in the planet. That means success. And that's what Sanchez wants, success. And it doesn't look like he's going to get that with Arsenal. All right. So uncertain times now at Arsenal for Alexis Sanchez. I'm sure that's not what Arsenal fans want to hear, but we will continue tracking this story here. Welcome to Extra Time after a dramatic Champions League day. Do you mind if I ask a question, Shaq? Because I'm oh. intrigued. Oh, so right. Edison made the save from Aubameyang, yeah? yeah? And if you look at the history of Aubameyang's penalties this season, they've all been down the middle. Would you research that? Yeah. There you go. Oh, well, that wait, was wait. Good. Do you mean would I research that or uh, do, would goalkeepers... Uh, uh, no, would Shaka Hislop the oh, night me? before? No, I'm... I'm uh, you go by <laughs> field. <laughs> you go by field. Yeah. Cut and paste. He yeah. puts the same preparation into that <laughs> as he does into his power rankings. <laughs> right. So, so you wouldn't publish push, that? You wouldn't look... Push. Uh, I, I, I just you felt would, you? You, uh, strikers change a lot, you know, and, and I kind of go on the feel of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. see? By feel, you know? by feel. Well, if you get some clown who puts it the same side every time, right? then clearly it's going to work. But Now, so from a penalty taker's point of view... I took, if three, you were, I took three in a Premier yes, League I know. Yes, So what I'm that. saying is it becomes difficult. But do you always go down the right and then you think, well, I've gone down the right last ten times. No, yeah, you start, second, you start second-guessing yourself. Right. And what the keeper's going to do, mm. and, and it, it's, it gets messy. Like, for instance, Van Nistelrooy used to go one side, keepers right every single time, but right. I, I can't think of what any did you, keeper did you dive who's, the other who's, way? Who's, who's got there. Everybody knew it. And, and Why don't you just stand by good. the right-hand post, then? Because then he'd put it the other side. And... Well, he'd be a tester. Oh. <laughs> Me, I'll, I'll, I'll try that next time, Dan. Yeah, in the Legend series. <laughs> right, I've got... I'm looking what, at the wrong... what happened with the Obama at one... Yeah, what... Oh, I'm a young. He's a straight down the middle. Love his the penalty straight there. down the middle. Yeah, <laughs> but his previous three have been straight down the middle. That's why I brought up the points. All right. Go ahead. Who's Charlie? Is he? <laughs> that is a good question. Well, that's very rare that that sentence doesn't end with you. you but there mix, we go. <laughs> you got to mix and match. Right. When is the SBI hanging up its boots? Mm. Would it say 83% faster to advance? Mind you, you all predicted faster. Yeah. yeah. However, Raph Onyxon, you predicted PSG. Mm. Pat yourself I the did? Back. Yes. Why? Who sounds so surprised? <laughs> I just felt both Barcelona and Real Madrid look vulnerable this year. They're not really convincing. They have individuals that, you know, score a lot of goals when it comes to smaller teams. But as teams, they don't really function. And I think both PSG and Napoli have got what it takes to knock them out. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Right. Ooh. I don't have a question. I have one answer. My Barcelona midfield is done. Ah, it's not far off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. hard to argue with. Happy that. Valentine's Day, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely time. Uh, uh. Next question: How good is Cavani? Twenty-five you, goals this season. You hate Cavani. Well, no, so I. How good is? Cavani? No, I didn't like that celebration where he used to like shoot the crowd. I didn't so, like that. So yeah. How good is Cavani? Well, hey, well, took it. Took that's it well what you today. dislike about Cavani. Yeah. Of all the things <laughs> to dislike a player for, I just dislike a celebration. <laughs> but, but that's for oh, goodness me. I've heard it all now. How good is he? 
He's very good, Dan. Is he? Yes. Mm. See now, you play up against you play up against Piki and Umtiti, and you look. There's every chance you're going to look even better. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, Raf, is Obama Young really worth all the hype? Yes, he is. Don't judge him on one game. I mean, judge him on the last two, three years, where this guy has shown himself to be one of the hottest strikers in Europe. If Dortmund are smart, they offer him a new deal tomorrow. That's a good if idea. he's smart, he's not taking it. <laughs> <laughs> We're already established. Everybody has a no. We were already established by Craig that Obama Young, perhaps not the smartest guy. Uh huh. Well, yeah. He'll get. I, I bet he bounces back in the return leg. Oh. But I bet he gets a hat trick. I bet he doesn't. How much? Seven hundred dollars. No. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'm sorry. What? This has got serious. I'll go for twenty. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> uh, uh, Seven hundred. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, where do we <laughs> sign? <laughs> Worth a gamble. Wow. That ballot. Right, Tom. He'll, he'll be back. If they create that many chances, well, yeah. again, there's no way that Benfica's going to be. some hundred dollars. No way. Seeing, That's all right. Well, no way Craig is watching the PSG second left. He's going to be there for no family <laughs> 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Deal. Uh, ESPN FC returns. 720. To... What? That? I'm going to go from 720. Sliding scale. Sliding scale. I don't think I agree to that. What's good on? Is that it? We're done? Champions League back this week with a round of 16 first leg ties. Here's the first four this week. I've lost some weight. <laughs> Paris Saint-Germain, you spent enough time in Paris oh, during the gonna... summer uh, against Barcelona. I'm going to go for a draw in the first leg. Barca to go through. Under pressure, Unai Emery. This is a club that spent billions chasing that uh, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, the Champions League. But it still looks as far away as ever for me. And I'm going to go for... A draw at least at home and Barca to go through over the two legs. We're going to take Paris Saint-Germain to win at home, but probably to go out overall. Benfica against Dortmund. Remember, all these teams finished second in their group, and these were all group winners. Dortmund ahead of Real Madrid. Yeah, but I'm just not convinced about them defensively. I think they probably will go through over the two legs, but I'm going for a Benfica win in Lisbon. Great stadium, fantastic atmosphere. They're strong at home, and they're defensively weak. I, I would not be totally shocked if Benfica put them out over the two legs, but I think... Dortmund are just edging it at the moment. Napoli are the only team to go to Stadio de Luz in a year and win there. But again, I'm with you. I think Dortmund will probably go through. Speaking of Napoli, what about that against Real Madrid? Yeah, I mean, lots, he's scoring lots of goals. Dries Mertens playing out his skin. Marit Hamzik, you know, lots of talent there. But, uh, can I? I got to. <laughs> I got to go for Real Madrid. You know, when the chips are down, most of the time, 99 times at 100, these big boys and these big players turn up, especially for the Champions League. That's the one... Ronaldo and Co. Uh, really want to win, so I'm going Real Madrid. Going back over the years, Schalke are the only team to have beaten them at home since April 2011 in the Champions League. It's a fortress. I think we did that game. We Roberto did. Di Matteo was manager, and yep. it was a real shock at the oh, time. Plenty of goals in that as well. Now Bayern against Arsenal again. Well, after the week I've had with Arsenal fans, I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, some good, some bad. But I mean, <laughs> taking that aside, you know, beat Hull at the weekend. But they're now in total control of the Bundesliga. They are. It was tight for a while. They've got a good gap now. Dortmund have fallen off the pace. Leipzig have been the big chasers behind track Frankfurt. Ancelotti loves this competition as well. How much would it mean to him to win it after mm -hmm. three goes from Pep Guardiola? Yep. They're starting to pick up a bit of pace. I just think they're too strong for Arsenal. You had a chance to appease yourself with the Arsenal fans there, and look what you did. I need to. I tell you what. I'd need to stick. A, I'd need to stick that more than just here to appease myself. <laughs> They're not going to beat Barca, are they? They shouldn't.